in the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. Um, just while we were praying, I heard um, God tell me to tell you that, he, okay, I heard the Holy Ghost say, whatever has stolen your peace, ask God today to reveal the source of that, and you will get the answer today. Whatever has stolen your peace, ask God to reveal the source of that, and he'll reveal that to you today. Um, three sources that I wrote down is sometimes you can lose your peace because of spiritual warfare, just a, an attack that you have nothing to do with. You didn't open up any doors for it. You didn't sin or do anything wrong. It's just like an, an attack was just launched and, you know, you just need to pray against it and it will stop. But also you can lose your peace because of the company that you're keeping. It could be somebody you're dating, somebody you're seeing, somebody you want to be with. It could be a friend. It could be a relative. Every time they come around, you just your peace escapes you. Um, and that's to indicate that there's really a foul spirit at play um, and things of that nature. And you can also lose your peace when you disobey God and think that you can go around your life like normal. You know, I know we have that thing to think that saying that we think that, um, you know, we all have free will and God allows us to do what we want. But what you don't realize is that while you have the ability to open up the mouth that God gave you and say, no, I'm not going to do what you told me to do, that does not absolve you of the consequences of that decision. So, yes, you have free will to make whatever decision you want to make, but it does not stop the consequences of that decision. And 100% of the time, those consequences are you losing your mind, ma'am and sir. It's you not having your right mind anymore. Um, and you may say, well, Tiffany, plenty of people don't listen to God. Yeah, but they're also not called of God, and you are. And so there are certain people who are called of God, and you can't run. You don't have a choice whether to say yes or no to God. Well, you have a choice, but the consequence of your choice is you losing your mind. So keep that in mind also. But don't take my word for it. The Holy Ghost said, ask him what, what stole your peace, and he will reveal the source of that. Um, our next prayer point is uh, help me, Holy Ghost, help me, Holy Ghost. So the number one thing we're going to do is we're going to repent for grieving the Holy Spirit. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to repent for quenching the Holy Spirit. Um, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to repent for destroying our friendship with the Holy Spirit. And then the fourth thing we're going to do is we're going to ask him for help. Um, and so just really quickly, I want you to jot down one to three things you're believing God for for this fast for the month of June, one to three things you're believing God for. Now, the reason why you don't want to bring all of your prayer points into a time of fasting is because fasting is really uh, made for you to be hyper-focused on one prayer or one thing that just won't budge during normal prayer right? Like this thing can only come out through prayer and fasting. And so uh, you don't want to bring in five things to this. Just bring in that one thing or two things that are not budging with regular prayer alone. You really need a breakthrough from God for, uh, but the Holy Ghost is going to be your helper in getting this thing to come to pass. But I think we should do first things first. You know, the Holy Spirit, first of all, is a person and he has feelings. And a lot of the times when you don't go to, to him first, and you, instead you call all your friends and you talk to all of them about the issue, he, you know, he's just somewhere staring at you like, you know, what am I, chopped liver? You're not going to talk to me about this? And so, um, you know, in a lot of ways we grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, when we walk in unbelief, I don't think we also recognize how much of a sin unbelief is. And it just really takes you away from the presence of God. Unbelief is so dangerous to a believer. And whenever you walk in unbelief, you quench the Holy Ghost. And it's like the Holy Spirit can't even be fire in front of you because you've taken a blanket and you smothered that, fly, that fire out, that flame out. It's just always cold around you. There's not an atmosphere of the fire of the Holy Ghost around you. And then um, for destroying your friendship, you know, just asking him, you know, I would like to work on our friendship and I would like to know what to do to make us better friends. You know, I'm sorry for grieving you. I'm sorry for whenever you spoke to me and told me to do something. I said, instead of saying the Holy Ghost said with confidence, I said, well, I don't know if it was him or not. I don't know. You know, I don't really hear the voice of God clearly. And that's just because you're not in relationship with him, right? And so let's just um, repent for those things, repent for grieving the Holy Ghost, repent for quenching the Holy Ghost, repent for destroying your friendship with him, and um, and make a vow that you're going to work on your friendship. And what that looks like is being more sensitive in your walk. 
So today it looks like you you like talking to him all throughout the day, like, you know, what street should I drive down, Holy Spirit, or what outfit should I wear today? Or can you believe this happened? I like what in the world just happened? Like literally talking to him throughout the day will build that friendship with him and you'll start hearing him talk back. And also whatever that one to two things that you wrote down, you know, asking for help. This is the thing that seems impossible. This is the thing that you can't move on your own strength. You know, whether that is an infirmity that the doctor has given up on, whether that is, you know, something financial, whether that's something in your mind or you're interceding for somebody else for this fast, whatever that thing is, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, give you a strategy, move on your behalf, give you supernatural support, supernatural assistance. Like there is a divine turnaround um, because the Holy Ghost, like, has entered into the building and now he's, he's doing it. The Bible says that he, according to Romans 8, you know, he intercedes through you with with groanings that cannot be uttered, and he prays the will of God for your life. So even when you don't know what to pray, even when you're at your wit's end, even when you've used every word in the English language and you're like, God, I don't even know what to pray about this situation next, the Holy Ghost said, I got it from here, and I will intercede for you um, using the will of God, which is the best prayer, most perfect prayer you can ever pray. So let's just pray those things really, um, really quickly over your life. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's take a few minutes to cover Covered by God Houston. It's happening tonight. If you haven't gotten your ticket already, go to the website, coveredbygod.co, um, so that you can join us in person. If not, we'll be streaming live on YouTube. But let's just pray Holy Ghost fire, like the fire of the Holy Ghost will hit the lives of every man, every woman, every child that comes in, that the fire of the Holy Ghost will be so tangible that this thing won't just end like this will not be church as usual. This will not end when you leave church and you the high comes down and you're back to your normal life. But this fire, you know, I got saved in my shower August 2015, and the encounter I had with God has had me on fire with him ever since. Since and we're in the year 2022. I've been on fire for God since that moment in my shower. And so we pray um, today that tonight will be a night of powerful encounters. Tonight will be a night of powerful encounters that will change the trajectory of your life forever, that will um, literally like just set you on fire when you go home for God, that will make you hate your sin, that will make you not go back to your lifestyle, that will make you um, be a fire that's contagious for other people that contact you, um, that just the love of God will just bring you at peace. Anything you've been struggling with, that tonight the fire of God is going to purge you of it, purify you from it, refine you of it, and it's just going to be a glorious time that the atmosphere at Covered by God is conducive to healing and deliverance, that before any minister even gets on the mic to preach, you know, the angels of the Lord are already 
um, you know, just all over the building crying out, holy, 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 that the angels of the Lord are already in the building uh, worshiping God, magnifying God, glorifying God, that before any minister ministers, that the atmosphere is already preaching. The atmosphere is already prophesying that the second you walk in, you know, your healing has taken place. You'll realize that maybe you came in with the ache, and before anybody preached, the ache is gone. Let's just pray that the power of the Holy Ghost is there, that no man's flesh glories in that presence, that um, that we preach and teach only what thus saith the Lord tonight, that you will receive a strategy straight from the throne room of heaven that will, um, that will uh, you know, give you victory in your situation. Let's just open up our mouth and whatever the Holy Ghost leads you to pray, let's just open up our mouth and let's just open up our
the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Um, for the rest of the day, I want you to take time praying in the spirit. Um, for those of you that don't have your, uh, you know, can't pray in tongues, you can simply ask the Holy Ghost. I can't. Many people DM me and say, Tiffany, can you teach me? It can't be taught. I don't. It's no class for it. There's no uh, book you can read that teaches you the syllables for it. This is only given from the Holy Ghost. And even though those of you that know how to pray in tongues, I want to challenge you to study the different types of tongues because many people in error say, you know, I have the gift of tongues. And that's not what that is. Um, the nine gifts of the Spirit, one of the gifts are of diverse tongues. Uh, and then the interpretation of tongues, but diverse tongues is when they start speaking in Russian and Chinese and Indian and Puerto Rican, and they're speaking the dialect of another nation, um, and they don't know it. So that's what that gift is. And then you have the tongues that were spoken in the book of Acts and then the tongues in Jude. And so um, there's 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 a few different uh, types of tongues. And uh, I would like for all of us to do a study on it so that we're not ignorant of it and using the wrong terms, you know, and that you just kind of know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you're not just doing it because you hear other people on YouTube and social media praying in tongues on the worship songs and you just feel like you're missing out. Like, what if everybody's in error and you just don't know it? So uh, my rule of thumb always is to point you to the Bible and find out why you're supposed to be praying in tongues. So pray in the Spirit today uh, for an hour. I would like for you to pray for an hour. Even if you need to break that up for 10 minutes at a time, that's fine, but make it a total of an hour. And just be really sensitive to the voice of the Holy Ghost today, um, even in the small things. If he says, hey, write this down or you know, even in a small thing, even if you're practicing, you know, it's just like being a little child and they're trying to practice riding a bike. Like no no good parent gets mad at the child for messing up on riding the bike. They encourage them even when they fall and they say, well, try again. And so right now you're in, an, a, you're in a beautiful place to, you know, just be listening to the voice of God as a child and you're like, hey, I'm just practicing with you. So you have a lot of grace you know, for messing up or you have a lot of grace for, you know, getting it right. And so just keep that in mind and stop being so hard on yourself because there's no condemnation and you, need, you really need to let that go because God don't even remember your sin anymore after you repented yesterday. The second thing is today is day two of our fast. We give to the poor. We give to the poor. Uh, one of my favorite, you know, stories in the Bible is in the book of Acts chapter 10. The Bible says Cornelius was a man who prayed always. He was very devout. And the Bible says that you know, he was a man that gave to the poor, and the angel of the Lord came to Cornelius and told him that his um, his giving to the poor came up as a memorial before God. This is in the New Covenant, right? This is New Testament, that his giving to the poor came up as a – so God remembered him because of how he lent to the poor. You know, anytime you're giving to the poor, you're lending the money for God. And I know some of you are like, Tiffany, well, I'm poor, and I want you to change your wording because, remember, we repented for our words. I want you to declare that you are not poor. You are very wealthy in a poor situation right now that you are getting yourself out of. You know, your words are very powerful, but stop confessing over your life that you're poor, you're broke, you don't have no money. A lot of that is your fault anyway because of bad stewardship, which is what you repented for yesterday. But let's just make a different declaration that you are wealthy. You're a wealthy man. You're a wealthy woman. Things will not be like this all the time. You know, at one time I was on WIC. At one time I was on welfare. At one time I was sitting getting in the office getting government assistance, and now I'm paying uh, close to a million dollars in taxes alone, which if you do the math, that means I make a whole lot more than that, you know? And so God forbid I would call myself poor in those situations, but even and then, as uh, a younger girl, I knew that I was not poor, even though I was poor. I was wealthy in a poor situation. And now my life is the fruit of the confession that I had made all those years, even when my bank account did not reflect that that confession was true. So please, we live in a kingdom, and our rules are different. It doesn't matter what you see. It matters what you say. Um, and the last thing but not least, of course, we meet tonight, Houston, Texas, uh, covered by God. It's going to be fire, and I'm very excited to see all of you. I miss you guys dearly, and I'm just excited to have a Holy Ghost good time with you all. Uh, let's get ready to take our communion. We're getting ready to take our communion. 
Uh, let's see here. I got mine. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we apply the blood and body of Jesus to our life, the lives of our family, our safety, our finances, our ministry, our work, and everything that pertains to us. With the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every curse, hex, witchcraft, and enemy assignment against ourselves and our family. We declare right now, God, that every evil thing falls dead to the ground and it bears absolutely no fruit in our lives. Father, we lose your holy protection over us. We declare, God, that everything that pertains pertains us is hidden under the secret place of the Most High God because we dwell under the shadow of your wing. Father, we ask that you cover us, um, cover our children, our spouses, everything that pertains to us, keep us safe, protect and bless us. And Father, we lose your holy uh, power, we lose your healing, we lose your resurrection life, we lose your joy, your peace, your righteousness, your power, and your perfect shalom. Nothing broken and nothing missing in our lives or in the lives of anybody that is attached to us in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Your prayers are not in vain. Your sacrifice is not in vain. Your commitment to praying and fasting for the first three days of every month for a few years now is not in vain. You will see a performance. So just praise God and thank God throughout the day that this sacrifice is not going unnoticed and God um, God is pleased with you. The conference is now completed. Goodbye. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By his grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of his word instantly comes to pass in your spirit. And when you're born again, there's a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.